This is fifth grade, module six, lesson 11. And in this lesson, students are gonna be analyzing number patterns cre uh, created by uh, com it's like combination rules. So like we're gonna be adding two, subtract three, or multiplying by a half, adding five. So we're doing a little bit of multiplication and addition or subtraction in, in a rule. So it's a combined rule. So let's get started. So the directions say to complete the table for these two rules, all right? So we're going to zoom in so we can see that first rule, all right? So it says to double your x value, and they've given us our x values already, so all we have to do is double it. So that becomes 2, 4, and 6. 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, so our ordered pairs become 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 6. So this is going to actually turn out to be like our home line. Uh, it's the one that we're going to compare with this mixed one, because this is just doubling. This has some doubling and some subtraction. So this is our combination. This is the mixed rule that we're going to compare with, right? So we're going to, oops, let's fill in the ordered pairs for this one. So this is our mixed set of rules. So it's double x and then subtract 1. So double it is 2. Subtract gives you 1. Double it is 4. Subtract gives you 3. Double it gives you 6. Subtract gives you 5. So our ordered pairs are 1, 1, 2, 3, and 3, 3. Five. So there are our ordered pairs, and what we're being asked to do now is now we're going to graph these guys on the same coordinate plane over here. So let's do this, and we'll do it in uh, blue. So we've got 1, 2, and that's going to go here. Then we've got 2, 4, and that's going to go here. And then we've got 3, 6, and that's going to go right there. So our line is going to look something like this. And you'll notice it's going through the origin and it's going up like that. All right. So now we've got this next one and here's our ordered pairs. And let's do that in red and that'll help us compare. And so we've got one, one. So that's going to go right here. And then we've got two, three, so that's going to go right here. And then we've got 3, 5, and that'll go right here. And so now if we're going to graph that, it again, well, it doesn't go through the origin this time. So this time, it's going like this. Right there. So there is our there's there are our two lines. We had line L and then this is our line M. And you can see they are parallel. They're not both going through the origin. Just the blue one is going through the origin. This red one is not going through the origin. So now the idea is um how would we compare these lines? Well, they're parallel. They have the same slant, the same steepness, same slope, however we want to call it. And then, why is the red one lower than the blue one? Why isn't the red one on top, like up here or something? And students, we want them to say, well, it's because it takes that original line, that home line, and then lowers it by one. It shifts it down by one and, and because we are subtracting by one. Let's see, is there anything else we could say? Well, yeah, what would we predict? What would the double X add one look like? If the blue is double X, you know, double the X, and if the red is double the X and then subtract one, what would it look like if we wanted to double X and add one? And we would want our students to understand that, oh, each of these dots, instead of being shifted down, would be shifted up. So our dots would look like shifted up 
shift it up, shift it up. Take the blue dot and shift it up one. And that gives us our new line. Whoa. <laughs> right there. I, I didn't. No, I don't like the thick ink. Let's do this thinner ink. And so our line would be right here. Right there. And that's what it would look like. It would be parallel to the blue line, but it would be shifted up. Now, similarly, uh, what we're doing is we've got these, we've got a rule. Here is our rule. Multiply x by a half and then add 1. Now, we want to know which of these four points fits this rule. All right. So, let's start with 0 as our x. And we, are gonna, we want to see, does it fit this rule? So, remember the rule. Oh, let's see. I'm going to move all this stuff down a little bit. And remember, we're going to take the x. We're going to multiply the x. Multiply by a half and then add 1. All right, so I'm kind of using a little bit of shorthand here. Multiply by a half and then add 1. So 0 times a half is 0. Add 1 would give us 1. Oh, that doesn't work for 0 half. So let's try this one. So the first one failed. Let's try the second one. So the x is 2. So let's think about that. If x is 2, according to the rule, we're going to multiply by a half. So 2 times a half is 1 whole, plus 1 whole, another whole. That gives us 2. Uh-oh, that doesn't work. So we know that this one is also wrong. It does not belong. So let's try this guy. Oh, hey, this guy works. It already, we already know it works because now it's, that's the answer we got. So now let's try 3 and a half. So it says x is 3, so let's put our 3 down here. Then it says take the 3, multiply by a half. Well, 3 times a half is 1 and a half plus 1. That gives us 2 and a half. That means this guy does not work. And so that's the idea for how to decide which of these points is belongs to this rule. And in this case, it's only one of the four points actually works. Can we give two other points that fall on this line? Well, yeah, actually, the, the, our options here would be points that fall on the line. If x is 0, then y is 1. If x is 3, then y is 2.5. These are points that do indeed fall on this line. So uh, you could just take that and say, yeah, 0, 1 and 3, 2.5 are two points that would fall on this line. You could actually choose any value for x. Initiate the rule, you know, subject it to the rule, and that's going to give you another point. For example, if you wanted to, you could say, well, let's, what if x is 100? Well, multiply by a half, so that makes it 50. Add 1, that gives you 51. So there's another point that would belong on the line. So this, parents and teachers, it really speaks to me the power of um, mental math. When we have things, uh, cut it in half, it means we're going to be dividing by two. And so we want to really be spending a whole year on number talks where we are cutting things in half, or we're adding things, we're, we're doing mental math. We really want this to be uh, mental math, not a, a laborious paper and pencil thing. So when we are doing this first rule, half x and then add 1, we really want students to be able to do this in their head. So if you have, oh, let's do it in purple. If you have 0, so 1 times a half, cut 0 in half, that gives you nothing, and then add 1, so that gives you 1. And then here, if you cut 1 in half, that gives you a half, add 1, that gives you 1 and a half. And then if you take 2, cut in half, that gives you 1. Then add the 1, so that gives you 2. 
and then cut three in half. So that gives you one and a half. Add one, so that gives you two and a half. So our ordered pairs, zero, one, one, one and a half, two, two, and three, two and a half. So there are our ordered pairs. And then if we're going to graph this one, this is going to be half, cut in half your x, and then add one and a fourth. So again, this is just really uh, a lot of beautiful opportunity for mental math. And so let's record that in, oh, let's do green. So take zero, cut it in half, that gives you nothing. Add one and a quarter, so that gives you one and a quarter. Whoa, not one and a half, one and a quarter, one and a quarter. So now let's take one. So take one, cut it in half, that gives you a half. Add one and a quarter, that gives you one and three quarters. So parents and teachers, what I want students to be thinking about is I want them to think about, okay, let's see. One cut in half, that gives us a half. And then we're going to add one and a quarter. So in their mind, mental math, I want students to think of something like this. Oh, let's take a half. Take a half. And then I'm going to take a quarter. And I want students to be able to see that, oh, if I take this quarter, move it over here, that gives me three quarters. Because two halves is two quarters. I mean, one half is two quarters plus the quarter. So that gives you three quarters, right? So I want students to be thinking about this mentally and then stick on the one hole. Um, I, I want them to be thinking about it mentally. I, I don't want this to be a laborious kind of calculation. So we need to be all year having our students practice mental math and specifically not showing their work. So let's keep going. So take two, cut it in half, that's one, plus one and a quarter, that gives you two and a quarter. And then lastly, take three, cut it in half, that gives you one and a half, plus the one and a quarter, so that gives you two and three quarters. And so there, there's our, our ordered pairs. So our ordered pairs are zero, one and a quarter, one, one and three quarters, two and two and a quarter, and three and two and three quarters. So there's our ordered pairs. What are we going to do? Well, first thing I want you to notice, when our, our rules, our rules both begin by cutting it in half. But then this says add a ha uh, add one, while down here we are adding one and a quarter. So what does that mean? This means it's going to be shifted up one. This is going to be shifted up one and a quarter. Uh, so this line is going to be slightly above this line. So wherever this line is, this line is going to be shifted up an additional one quarter. All right, does that make sense? So I'm going to sp not going to graph it. I'm going to let make you graph it. But you know that this line has to be above this line. So this line's going to be below, and this line's going to be above by a quarter. Compare and contrast those lines. Then this is the exact same as the previous, only now we're kind of making our, our recipe just a little bit more complicated. We're going to take our formula, multiply x, multiply by 3 quarters, then add, no, not supposed to add, it says subtract, so we're going to subtract, so we're going to multiply by 3 quarters, and then subtract by a half. So we're going to take that rule, and we're going to, oh, I, I like to make it a table. All right. So I'm going to start with that 1, this guy right here, the x is 1. And I'm going to say, well, if x is 1, 
and we multiply by three quarters, subtract by a half, do we end up with one quarter? And if we do, we're going to circle it because he's a winner. If we get something other than one and a quarter, that means this point is wrong and we cross them off, cross him off. And we're going to do the same thing with two. So you put in two and you're going to follow the rule. So take two, multiply by three quarters, subtract by a half. If you get one quarter, then we're, it's a winner. Woohoo! If you get something else, then this guy is a loser. And you just kind of keep essentially investigating until you find which points are on uh, that fit that rule. All right. I'm not going to do all the work. Uh, parents and teachers, you just need to understand that multiplying by three quarters, subtracting by half, this might get laborious for your students. Uh, they need to be developing some really good mental math skills so that they can do this kind of work in their head fairly um, quickly. And that wraps up fifth grade module six, lesson 11. The patterns are getting more complicated because our rules are now involving both multiplication and addition or multiplication and subtraction.